Hi traders, I'm Lance Beggs from YourTradingCoach.com and welcome to the YTC Price Action Trader bonus video, Future Trend Simplified. This was not a planned addition to the course, but it is a direct result of reader feedback, so it's a good example of why I do encourage feedback, and together we can work as a team to improve all content available through my site, providing benefit to us all. This will be a very raw video production, I make no apologies for that. I'm not a professional speaker, video director or editor. The important thing is providing you with this content in as quick a manner as possible. So please forgive any ums and ahs and any other defects throughout. Standard financial disclaimer. Trading does involve significant risk and you will be exposed to loss of funds. All information I provide is to be considered general comment only for the purposes of information and education. I don't know you. I don't know your personal circumstances. So I cannot and will not provide financial advice. Please seek professional advice as to whether any information I provide may be appropriate to your particular circumstances, needs and objectives before acting on any information that I provide. In particular, before watching this video, please familiarize yourself with the full disclaimer at yourtradingcoach.com forward slash disclaimer dot html. And if you're unsure about the contents of that disclaimer, please email me via support at yourtradingcoach.com. A prerequisite for this video is obviously that you've read the YTC Price Action Trader, in particular volumes 2 and 3. If you haven't completed them yet, by all means, watch through the video, but please come back to it again after completing those volumes, so that it makes sense, and then again at the end of the whole six volumes. Alright, let's talk about the YTC Price Action Trader and the reason for this video. Feedback to the product has been superb, far exceeding my expectations, and I thank you very much for that. And from that feedback, I'm encouraged to see that the level of understanding of the content has generally been very good. And there are now quite a few people who are working through their trader development process as per volume 5. So I'm happy to report that there is unlikely to be any need for a complete rewrite. And I can get on with the job instead of providing new information. However, there is one area that I would like to address in order to clear up, I guess, some perceived complexity. And that is the process of determining our bias for future trend direction. Our expectation for the path of least resistance, or where is price likely to go next. Having analysed the price action here, from the start of the UK session, we rallied to hit resistance, came back to the support at this swing low here, broke to a downtrend, and bounced with a three swing retracement off the support. Okay, so having analysed that, how exactly do we determine the likely future direction? Is it scenario A, breaking through further support and continuing downtrend? Scenario B, bouncing off the support level and reversing for uptrend? Or scenario C, just straight back up? It seems a few people at least are just stuck at this stage. How do we determine our bias for future trend direction? So what is causing this difficulty? From reader feedback, I see one main problem. It appears that some people are just overwhelmed by the rules, or more specifically, the six principles are provided for future trend direction. So let's discuss this along with a potential solution. Traders look at price action, they conduct their analysis, and then, then in their mind there is a floating just a whole mess of rules. Rule number one, we expect an up or down trend to continue in its current state until the next SR barrier, unless we see evidence of weakness within the trend. Rule 2, when an up or down trend shows evidence of weakness, we expect a higher likelihood of a complex correction rather than a reversal, until such time as the market shows both price acceptance and strength in the new trend direction. Rule 3, a sideways trend within the framework is expected to continue in its current state unless displaying evidence of strength towards the range boundary. Rule 4, when a sideways trend shows evidence of strength towards the range boundary, we expect a break of the boundary. We observe the behaviour of price post breakout for clues as to future direction. Weakness following the breakout, the expect expectation is for a breakout failure and reversal back within the range. Weakness on the pullback, the expectation is for a breakout pullback and continuation. Rule 5, we expect a test of framework support and resistance to hold, unless strength is displayed on approach to the SR boundary. And finally, Rule 6, if strength is shown on an approach to an SR boundary, we expect a breakout and watch behaviour of price post breakout for clues as to future direction.
Weakness following the breakout, the expectation is for a breakout failure and reversal back through the area of support and resistance. Weakness on the pullback, the expectation is for a breakout pullback and continuation. The end result, it appears, is confusion. Here's the cause of the problem as far as I see it. We all process information differently. While my brain works fine in a linear, procedural or uh, rule-based manner, it's important to remember that not everyone else's does. So what's the solution? At the moment, analysis of past price action is largely a visual process, while analysis of future trend direction is largely a rule-based process. And that's fine for me, I can easily process these rules and visualise a future path. As per this example here, back down to the support area for further test, before reversal, to a steady state uptrend pullback entries. I can easily process these rules and visualise the location of potential setup areas. But not everyone else has the experience or the ability to process information this way, taking a visual process, applying rules and then visualising an outcome. So I think for those of you who find this concept difficult, we need some change. If past price action is a visual process, then we need future trend direction to be a visual process as well, rather than rule based. So as it currently stands, we have incongruent processes, visual and rule based, creating complexity, leading to doubt, confusion, second guessing, and a general feeling of being overwhelmed. If that's you, then I'm hoping that a change to more congruent processes, so visual based in both cases for past price action analysis and future path assessment, should lead to increased simplicity, which will hopefully lead to increased clarity and decisiveness, which is so important in trading. How do we make this change? We're going to make use of the setups poster in chapter 18 in volume 6. You'll find it on page 29, so pause the video and print out a copy of uh, from your book. This will form the basis of our simplification. The setup poster visually describes past price action, but it can also be used to project future expectations. What you need to do is to identify which scenario out of here, steady state trend, weakening trend, strength at SR, or testing SR. You need to identify which scenario is relevant to current price action and project it forward. For example, if you find yourself in a steady, a stable uptrend, which then starts to level off, so it's weakening, perhaps at this point here, pull back, at this point here, having only just broken the uh, previous swing high and pausing, then what you do is get the setup poster, make use of this picture here, and have a look to see projected forward to see what is coming next. In this case, you'll know to look for a complex pullback, one, two, three swing retracement, before any further attempts to re resume the trend. And you'll be watching any resumption of trend closely to confirm whether it can break to new highs, continuing up here, or whether in fact it shows further weakness as per this example, and perhaps even a retracement and reversal. Now we'll walk through, work through some examples shortly, but you'll notice that the poster will not cover all scenarios exactly. For example, the steady state trend is only shown as an uptrend. Obviously there's downtrends existing as well, as is uh, sideways trends. You may wish to expand upon the poster for your own use through creating a few pages showing numerous scenarios, up, down, sideways, whatever else you can think of. Maybe also different types of weakening trends. Show those which do lead to a resumption of trend, and those which subsequently lead to reversal. And consider also showing numerous outcomes as price tests, support and resistance levels. In fact, this could be a great use of your market structure journal, which we discussed in Volume 5. Use the charts from within this journal to help develop your more detailed setups poster to ensure it captures in general form all of the basic types of market environment. But making use of the Volume 6 poster for now, as it currently stands, let's start at the top left of the, uh, the poster, the steady state trend. What do I mean by a steady state trend? Essentially it's a trend up, down or sideways which no, shows no signs of changing. That is strength and weakness do not change over time. Let's consider an uptrend first. It might be a non-volatile trend as in the example here. 
with only short pullbacks. Or it might be a volatile trend, as per down here, with pullbacks that retrace almost 100% of the previous, previous extension. But regardless of volatility, there is no significant observable change to the strength and weakness displaying within the price swings. Bullish extensions typically show strength when compared with their previous extension. Bullish ex extensions are typically stronger than the bearish pullbacks. And bearish pullbacks typically show similar strength or weakness to previous pullbacks. Likewise for a downtrend, regardless of whether it's non-volatile or volatile, the important characteristic required to classify, classify this as a steady state trend is that there are no significant observable changes to the strength and weakness within the price swings. And again for a sideways trend, some are tight areas of narrow range congestion and others involve wide price swings both up and down. The key feature though which makes it a steady state trend is the fact that there is no significant observable change within the strength and weakness the bullish or bearish price swings. They continue as they did before. And of course if we had analysed and traded the past price action in the most optimal manner we would have profited from the pullback entries within this st steady state trend. Whether the market represent, uh, provides us with a pullback or a complex pullback uh, setup, they both are higher probability trades on offer within a steady state trend. Essentially buying the dips at this point and this point here. As a side note, you may in a volatile trend also have considered counter trend scalps on the retracements as price stalls and reverses after having broken above the previous swing high at this point here. Essentially a breakout failure counter trend. I'll mention these setups here but not any further on the diagrams as they're a lower probability option so let's stick to the higher probability pullbacks operating in the direction of the trend. So the standard pullback here and here. Same same for downtrend, had you been analysing and trading well you would have identified and traded the various pullback opportunities within your steady state downtrend. And for steady state sideways trend you should have seen and taken advantage of hopefully at least some of the test or breakout failure opportunities at the upper and lower edges of the sideways trading range. But let's look forward now, projecting forward from past price action to future trend. We've identified the market is currently in a steady state trend, so what is our expectation for the future trend? Our expectation is for continuation of that trend in the same state as existed before. In other words, the trend is your friend. Expect continuation of the trend until you see evidence of something to, sorry, until you see evidence to suggest that something is now different. So a steady state uptrend we expect it to continue in the same manner. Pullback to a PB or CPB opportunity, then further price extension to new highs, once again with no observable changes in strength or weakness compared with previous extensions. Then another pullback to a pullback or complex pullback opportunity, and another extension and on and on and on until something is observed to change maybe at the next resistance level if not before. Same deal for steady state but volatile or wide swinging trend. Steady state continues, price pulls back to another pullback or complex pullback opportunity, extends to new highs, pulls back again and extends again to new highs and on and on. And if you like the lower probability trades, then maybe you'll also take a few of the counter trend and breakout failures or tests as well. But then I said we wouldn't mention those lower probability opportunities again, didn't I? So let's, let's leave them. The point is though, with a steady state trend, visualising the future path and future setup opportunities is quite simple. We just expect more of the same, continuation of the same trend and continuation of the pullback or complex pullback setup opportunities. The trend is your friend. The same applies for steady state downtrend, our expectation for the future trend is more of the same. Continuation of the same steady state trend or remaining observant in order to find the pullback and complex pullback opportunities, regardless of whether the trend is non-volatile or volatile. And again for a sideways trend, our expectation for the future trend 
is more of the same. Continuation of the sideways ranging price action. Watching out for test or breakout failure opportunities as the upper, at the upper and lower boundaries of the range. So to summarise, for a steady state trend, trust the trend. Expect continuation until you see evidence to suggest change. Observe past price action to be in a steady state trend, as in a setup poster here. Expect continuation with another pullback opportunity and extension. And another pullback opportunity and extension. And on and on. Nice and easy stuff. So if you want to pause and review principles one and three, you'll note that the continuation of a steady state trend is simply a visual representation of these two principles, numbers one and three. An up or down trend is expected to continue. A sideways trend is expected to continue until something shows that they're not going to play that game any longer. So let's look at a chart example. What is our expectation here of future trend? Analysis of past price action confirms a steady state uptrend, albeit with fairly wide price swings. So it's quite a volatile uptrend. But we do have clear highs, swing lows, higher swing high, higher swing low. So it's a steady state uptrend. In accordance with the setups poster, our expectation then is for continuation of that steady state uptrend with, with wide price swings and pullback trade opportunities. So we continue this leg to new highs and we expect a pullback opportunity, possibly a B in the previous swing high. Further extension, further wide swinging pullback, once again watching around the area of previous swing high or swing low, and then further extension and continuing on and on. We expect this will continue until we see some evidence of change such as the trend reaching an area of resistance or the trend showing clear signs of weakening or perhaps a news driven price shock or perhaps some sudden strength in the opposite direction. Another example. In this case our past price action analysis identifies a steady downtrend, non-volatile in this case. Price extension, weak pullback, price extension weak pullback. Steady state downtrend. So what is our expectation for future trend? Our expectation as before is for continuation of that steady state uh, trend, in this case a downtrend. So further price extension, weaker pullback, price extension, weaker pullback, and on and on. The trend is your friend. Trust the trend until it ends or until it hits up against a lower support area. Third example, a sideways trend. So what is our expectation for future trend? Our price action analysis identifies a steady state sideways trend operating between lower support at this green line here and upper resistance at this red line here. Our expectation then is for continuation of the same. Trust the trend until strength shows towards a boundary indicating a likelihood of breakout. And we look for trade opportunity towards the boundary areas. So down at support here and here, up at resistance there and there. And if you wish to have more action and can clearly identify up and down trends within the sideways action, you may wish to also look for pullbacks within these shorter time frame trends. So for example, if you identified an uptrend here within the range, you may wish to trade this pullback opportunity as price pulled back in the example here to the previous swing high before continuing to the upper range boundary. And if you manage to identify a downtrend here, it provides another pullback opportunity at this point here before heading to the lower support. Hopefully that's pretty clear. If I've explained it well enough, you should be comfortable with this concept. If you identify a steady state trend in past price action analysis, look to your setups poster. And be reminded of the fact that our expectation is for continuation of that steady state trend in the future. Trust the trend, expect continuation until you see evidence of change. Okay, let's now move on to the next area of the poster, the weakening trend. Please note this is not a weakening trend coming into an area of resistance or support. This is price action somewhere inside the SR framework. To be honest, this is probably not the best diagram that could have been used in the poster. Although a weakening trend can show continued weakness, as in this case, 
and even reversal. Principle 2 states that we should expect continuation after the complex pullback unless we see evidence of further weakness as shown here. So perhaps the diagram would better represent this weakening trend environment if it came down to the complex pullback and then continued on from that point. There may be a change you wish to incorporate in your setups poster if you decide to produce a more comprehensive one. In any case, let's look at how we determine future trend following identification of a weakening trend environment. Here we've identified an uptrend through our price action analysis. The same applies as before. It doesn't matter if it's a non-volatile trend or a volatile trend. It's a steady state trend that then develops weakness. Note in this example we observe a steady state trend through this point here. then a weaker extension here at this point here. Okay, Weaker extension compared to the previous one. So look at the slope or the angle of price action here as opposed to there. We then get a stronger pullback at this point here when compared with the previous pullback. And another weaker extension compared with the previous extension. The trend is clearly weakening. What is our expectation at this point for future trend direction? We expect at least a complex pullback, then continuation higher, unless there are signs to indicate otherwise. We'll talk shortly about what the signs could indicate uh, to show us a reversal, but for now our primary expectation is always for a complex pullback, so that will be three swings or extended duration perhaps that breaks below this intermediate swing low before continuation. We trust the trend. So exactly as with the steady state trend, with a weakening trend, we still trust that trend. If you can visualize it, realize as well that a complex pullback on this time frame is quite likely just a simple pullback on a higher time frame chart. So we're benefit benefiting from some of the higher time frame pullback entry order flow as well. So what signs would indicate a potential reversal rather than continuation. Evidence of a likely change of trend may involve strength against the trend or confirmation of a change of trend. Here we have both in this example. From the strength perspective, note the strength of the down move at this point here in comparison with the previous downswings. It's a steeper angle and a greater projection. This is then followed by a weaker upswing and our expectation for future trend is in the direction of strength and against the direction of weakness, so we anticipate a continuation downwards. From the change of trend perspective, you'll note a change of objective trend definition at this point here as we break this swing low, confirmed through the pullback remaining below the swing low, so our objective definition now meets uh, the subjective definition requirements and we've confirmed a downtrend. Beyond this point, at this point here. Price should follow this exact path and we now expect a steady state downtrend until the next support level or until signs of bullish strength suggest otherwise. The key point though, our expectation is for continuation. We only expect a reversal when we see signs of strength to the reverse direction and or a change of trend. Our priority is always to trust the trend. We anticipate a complex pullback and continuation. So let's look at a chart example. In this case we have a weakening of the uptrend. You'll know that we notice that we have three peaks here at the top. One, two, and three. The first here, the second only just able to exceed the first before a rapid rejection. Note the shooting star pattern with the upper tail. And the third unable to even reach that level again before rejection. In the eyes of anyone with a bearish bias, they'll see a potential head and shoulders formation or any number of other reasons for seeking an early entry short to catch a reversal. So what's our expectation though for future price action? I trust the trend. Note that we already have effectively a three swing retrace here, down to the swing low there, up to the high and closing on almost on the lows of the bar here. So effectively we've done three swings, but I'm looking for price to break this intermediate swing low which will bring in some new shorts, then looking for the downwards move to fail, or fail to continue below this point, and certainly below there, which would change the trend definition. 
Okay, this is evidence that it has failed to attract a wider bearish following. And then we're looking for continuation back in the long direction again. These dudes here are trapped, and we're part of the team that springs their trap and profits from their demise through continuation higher. And if price follows this path, having broken to new highs, we'll expect to see a steady state uptrend develop, which will continue to either further weakening and or the next area of resistance. So what price action might indicate a reversal rather than continuation? Strength against the trend and or a confirmed change of, of trend. In this case, we might take our complex pullback long, take our entry at this point here, but the market fails to rally. There's no evidence of bullish strength at all during this uh, price extension. Scratching the trade for maybe break even or, or a uh, reduced loss, price then fails to confirm, sorry, price falls, and confirms as it breaks this point here, confirms a change of trend. So from there we look for pullback opportunities short in our new steady state downtrend. Let's look at one more example, this time a downtrend. Analysis here shows a weakening trend environment. Low point one over here, a stall to low point two, and a grind down to low point three, which broke below one but then rapidly reversed. So what is our expectation for future trend direction? Seeing the bullish pressure fighting against the bearish pressure of the downtrend, do we anticipate a reversal? Absolutely not. We trust the trend. We expect a complex pullback and continuation of the downtrend, which is exactly what happened in this occurrence here. You can see a complex pullback from the weakening and continuation of the downtrend. So a quick summary. For a weakening trend, we still believe in that trend. We're faithful. We trust it until we have clear evidence to suggest otherwise. We don't expect a reversal. Any counter trend trades you do take will be taken in expectation of a scalp only. We anticipate a complex pullback and then continuation in the direction of the trend. So the weakening trend section of the setups poster shows a visual representation of principle two. If your analysis identifies a weakening trend and you're not sure what to anticipate for future price action, look to your setups poster. Where you see the visual representation, be reminded to watch for a complex pullback and then continuation of the trend. As I mentioned before, this is perhaps not the best visual representation as it shows the complex pullback and continuation, but then the subsequent price action here in this diagram shows the reversal scenario where the continuation failed to break the highs. Although it's not incorrect, it's perhaps in hindsight not the best representation of our expectations, which is for continuation higher. Let's move now on to the next area of the poster where we discuss price interaction with support and resistance. You'll note the setups poster just shows a break of resistance. The exact same scenario applies in reverse as a break of support. So as we work through examples showing either support or resistance, please realize that the opposite applies as well. And please note that this also is applicable at the upper and lower boundaries of a sideways trading range, not just at the higher time frame support or resistance. This diagram is acting as a visual representation of both principles four and six providing clear guidance for our price expectations following a break of support or resistance. So we have a steady state trend, which we expect to break the resistance area. Why do we expect that? We see some signs of potential strength, which lead us to feel the potential for breakout. Perhaps there's a news induced, induced increase in volatility and volume, perhaps an accelerating move upwards after a break of a uh, lower re resistance area. Whatever it is, we expect a break of this resistance area here. So then price does break the resistance. What is our expectation now for future trend? Well, if your mind works like mine, you'll have principles four and six. Or if you're more visual, look to the setups poster here and here, which gives you actually two potential future paths for price action. Firstly, having broken resistance, we have a stall and reversal. In other words, a breakout failure. Or well, secondly, acceptance of the new price area with a weaker pullback and continuation of the trend. So a breakout pullback opportunity. 
As to which, well that's largely a feel thing, which will improve with experience. The break will often have an initial surge as a result of the breakout traders entering the market and providing a surge of order flow. However, the key is the price action immediately following this and then during the pullback. Is the move continuing upwards from this point, indicating that it's attracted many more bulls to the market and is likely to accept price in this region, or has it quickly stalled, leading us to expect a breakout failure entry? Is the pullback shallow and weak, finding support at the area of breakout, as shown here, leading to a potential breakout pullback entry? Or is it strong, breaking back through the resistance area, rejecting the higher prices and confirming a breakout failure? Note that sometimes you might get both trades. You'll expect a breakout failure having seen the breakout and a quick stall. Price is broken out, stalled, you take the short, but then the pullback turns out to be weak and shallow. So you scratch your breakout failure trade and reverse your position to take a breakout pullback in a long direction. Let's look at the chart. So on this chart we have a breakout of resistance at this point here being the red line. So what is our expectation of future trend? Looking at the setups poster, we're reminded that there are two possibilities. Firstly, a breakout failure. So we could be watching for price to stall and reverse. Well, the second being a breakout pullback. Stall, shallow pullback, finding support and continuing long. In this case, You'll note here that we have a further resistance level just 10 pips above the original. So with this higher resistance level, there is expected to be quite a bit of selling pressure. So in this case, I'll expect the first scenario to be the most likely, being the breakout failure. Which, uh, sorry, lost the uh, charts there. So we expect at this point a breakout failure to be the higher probability option which is exactly what had occurred in this case as you can see from the price action. Another example, this time a uh, breakout of support. What is our expectation in this case for future trend? Looking at our setups poster we're reminded of two possible opportunities here. One being a breakout failure to back up through support and, and reversing. Or two, a breakout pullback. So pulling back up to the point of breakout, previous support, now resistance, and continuation lower. And in this case, the second scenario was the winner. Following the breakout, there was a little price stall here, but it closed on the lows, and then continued further, further lower, closing once again in the lower third on the third candle. So there's evidence of continuing bearish pressure. So we won't be looking at this stage for breakout failure. The pullback was nice and orderly, but it did stall at the point of breakout and offered a great entry in a short direction. So a quick summary. For a break of a support or resistance level, examine price action following the breakout for signs of strength or weakness, indicating either a breakout failure or a breakout pullback scenario. A little something extra that's implied in the principles, but perhaps you haven't perceived it. It's also not on the poster, but perhaps if you wish to expand on the poster, you'll add this. So what do we expect after a breakout failure? And what do we expect after a breakout pullback? So let's look at the two. We'll start first with the uh, breakout pullback. After a price has broken out, we have our breakout pullback entry long. We expect a steady state continuation of that trend with pullback entry opportunities. Trust the trend. And what about after the breakout failure? Again, we still trust the trend. Like the weakening trend, until there is evidence of strength against the trend and a confirmed reversal, we expect a pullback and then another attempted retest or possibly attempted breakout of the support or resistance area. So here as an example, the pullback stalled in the vicinity of the previous swing low. We took a pullback entry long in anticipation of a retest and possible further breakout. However, in this case the retest was weak. Note the weaker price extension as opposed to the previous and inability to break through the resistance area. If we recognize that, we may be lucky enough to be able to take a uh, test entry in a short direction. The next swing 
down from here confirms the change of trend as we've broken the swing low and accepted price at the lower levels. So from here we then expect a steady state downtrend continuing lower until we see evidence of change or hit a further lower support area. Let's now move on to the final area of the poster, a test of support or resistance. You'll note the setups poster again just shows, in this case, a test of support. The exact same scenario applies in reverse as a test of resistance. So as we work through these examples showing either support or resistance, please realise, as before, that the opposite applies as well. A steady state trend moves down towards an area of support. We have no reason to believe that this will break through. So what is our expectation? for future trend. Well, in accordance with principles 3 and 5, we expect the area of support or resistance, in this case support, to hold. As displayed in the setups poster and shown here. If you're looking at price and there's an approach to SR which is not showing any particular increase in strength and does not give any reason to expect a breakout, then anticipate price to hold without breaking the level. And what happens after the first test? What is our further expectation? Well, like before, until we see evidence of strength against the trend or a confirmed trade change of trend, we still trust the existing trend. So we expect another attempt at the SR level. And subsequent tests of SR then lead to more of the same, and we continue that for as long as necessary till we either broke out below the support area or confirm the change of trend. You'll note here that this is exactly the same as the setup poster. So price action coming down a steady state downtrend, no evidence to expect a breakout. So we take a test opportunity. We then at this stage still trust our trend. We're not looking for reversal until we see signs of strength in the bullish direction or a confirmed change of trend. So if price stalls here and breaks below that stall area, we have another pullback opportunity short for a subsequent attempt to test or break through the support area. In this case it has, and we now go back to the other area of our setups poster and look for either a breakout failure or breakout pullback opportunity. So let's look at a couple of chart examples. Price has moved down to an area of support and stalled. We expect a break of the high of this stall area. So we've got three candles here at the base. A break of the high of these three candles will trigger the bullish order flow. So we might identify that as our test setup, LWP, last wholesale point. But what is our expectation of future trend? And what does it look like visually? Exactly like our setups poster, we expect a test of the SR level and then a pullback. However, unless we see evidence of a potential change of trend, we continue to trust our trend. So our primary expectation then is for a further retest of the, SR, of the uh, supporting, support level. And that will remain in force for as many pullbacks as is necessary. And usually that won't be more than maybe two until we either break through the level and then we refer to the breakout part of the setups poster. Or until we see a change of trend test, pullback, test, strength here in the bullish direction when compared with the previous bullish swing, clear breakout above the intermediate high and quite strong in projection as well. So we have a confirmed change of trend and then from this point we expect steady state uptrend until weakness shows or price hits the next resistance level. So what actually happened uh, in this example following this price action? We have the initial test, pullback, test, very shallow pullback and breakout. We trust the trend, which was downtrend into support. Continue to trust it until we see evidence to suggest otherwise. So for test of SR, we expect the level to hold and for price to then pull back for a subsequent retest. So hopefully that's been some help. Please practice with this concept and make use of the existing setups poster, or if you prefer, expand upon the poster to include some of the variations of these general patterns. Examine current price action, conduct your analysis, 
identify which scenario is a best fit for current price action and project it forward to provide you with a potential path for future price action and future setups. A word of caution though before we wrap it up. I talked a bit about this a bit in the book. It certainly applies when using the rules, but it equally applies when using a visual process for forming your future bias. Avoid the need for certainty. Remain flexible and update your expectations bar by bar. If price does not fit in with your expectations for future trend, then adjust your expectations. Or if you can't see what's going on at all, just stand aside until it does become clear. So to summarise, through reader feedback I identified one primary challenge. Some people had difficulty applying the six principles for future trend direction. As a first attempt at overcoming this, I recommend managing this through creating a visual process rather than a rule based process for that future trend direction. And we can do that through use of the setups poster. Well, if you've made it this far in the video, I applaud you. Thank you. I hope you got some good value out of this. Keep the feedback coming about everything I do and we'll continue to improve the material available through the Y2C newsletter and trading courses. I've had a request for some live video analysis or session reviews. I recognize that that um, that is probably an even better way of demonstrating concepts. That's probably something we can look at in the future. However, let's build towards it. We established the foundation through the original Y2C Price Action Trader PDFs. This video will hopefully refine it and improve your understanding of this critical section of the document. The upcoming YTC Scalper document will provide a different perspective, mainly applicable to those who want even lower time frames, but should still offer plenty for all traders. Beyond that, perhaps we'll get into some session review videos or something along those lines. I'm looking forward to it. So thanks again. I'm Lance Beggs from www.yourtradingcoach.com. Happy trading.